Hi there. I know I usually post a bunch of memes and stupid shit on this channel, but I wanted to do a quick video about uh, the CAN bus interface because it's something I've been working on for work and I found there wasn't really that much just concrete, easy to, easy to digest information about this. So I'm just going to make this quick video. There are a few different types of CAN protocols that you can go from. Uh, there's CAN FD, there's CAN Open, and there's J1939. Uh, the most common of the two are definitely CAN FD and J1939. You'd probably find 1939 in like heavy machinery, which is what I've been dealing with. And uh, you'd probably find CAN FD in cars, uh, in which case you've probably got CAN open as well. It's a complicated thing. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to gather that data and how you can actually decode it. So let's get into it. So as you can see here, this is what I've been using to interface to the CAN bus on this device that I've been trying to gather some data from. Underneath, you can see a Raspberry Pi, and on top of that is a CAN hat. And a CAN hat is a device that sits on the GPIO interface. There's those bunch of pins there. Uh, and it communicates with the Raspberry Pi via that interface to send and receive data, essentially. So let's have a look at a quick uh, message format here. <clears throat> this is for J1939, so this is what's coming out of your car. You've got the 29-bit CAN ID, which is an extension of the, I think, 11-bit uh standard can uh protocol uh, or format sorry uh that's only 11 bits so you don't have as much information as there but j1939 has your pgn which is the actual identifier which i want to focus on is this eight byte data field so that's what we've got here and when you do uh, a can dump which i'm going to show you in a second what you're going to get is this data field combined with this uh this id or, or usually just this pgn so i'll show you what i've been getting this is a dump from a CAN device that I interface to and grab some data from. Uh, you can see here there's a few different types of CAN here. You've got CAN open with these sync frames and PDO frames here. Uh, so a PDO is essentially, um, uh, it's a data packet in the CAN open format. So you see here there are some data packets here. These are obviously J1939 because not only do they have the extended ID here, which is separated by this little hash, but you've also got a much longer data field here. This is actually made up of four different fields, uh, each identifying a different interface on this strain gauge, which is what, uh, what this came from. It measures uh, strain on a winch, essentially. To set this up, you have to go through a few different steps. Obviously, connect it to the GPIO, enable a couple of things, and there's some tools you can get too. Uh, this requires the Python library wiring Pi and BCM, but once you have all that, you can install something called CanUtils. And what CanUtils is, I think I have that saved here. CanUtils is a bunch of different tools that are combined under one repo that allow you to manipulate, analyze, log, and send can data. It's really good. Once you've actually physically connected your can hat to this uh, can interface, and you can do that a number of different ways. You can either get a can to USB uh, adapter, like a cable that will have your can um, connector on the end and from that you can go straight into uh, the uh, can interfaces on here via some cables usually it's only can high and can low there are two different connectors and there's a ground in the middle as well but you i've never used it you might have to i would definitely double check with the uh the device you're actually getting to interface with make sure it you know if it does require a ground connector connect it. if it doesn't don't okay um so connect it via that make sure you've got the correct uh frequency for the actual IP links that you're going to have to set up as part of this uh, set of instructions here, which I'm not going to go through because it takes about an hour. Um, that way you're getting all the data you actually want to get, because if it's not in sync with the device you're interfacing to, you're going to miss some data because it's not going to be polling at the same rate, or you'll get a bunch of junk data that's just garbage and you can't do anything with it. So that's very important to note. All right, so once you've done all that, you can run can dump. And that is where this came from. This is a can dump log. So you can run that with the uh, with the argument of dash L. And then once you've done that, you can uh, target the can interface that on your Pi or via virtual can, if you want to do it that way. Uh, it will then read out all of the incoming signals, which are just going to be these raw bits. But once you have this, what, what do you actually do with it? Like, what is this? It's not really that useful as is. You can plug it into a database and scale it, uh, as I've done. Uh, you know, you don't need to decode it. If you just want to visualize that data, that's fine. But if you actually want to know what it says, there's a few extra steps. So there's this lovely little tool here uh, that I've used plenty of times by CSS Electronics. 
um, what this does is basically a way of mapping CAN frames uh, and extracting their signal uh, physical value. So that, that's really important, really good to have. Okay, so let's say, as an example, you, ha <clears throat> you have a data frame from a, a dump truck and you know what that ID is and what it relates to. And in this case, we know it relates to the RPM or the engine speed as it's logged in the DBC file. A DBC file is kind of like a database full of all the decoding instructions for, you know, several different CAN IDs and, and manufacturers of car, and that includes the offset and the scale values, and sometimes they change, so it will tell you if that happens. Really, 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 really important to have, so definitely um, get that if you want to have any chance at decoding this stuff, because you just can't do it without it. You can try, but it would take a long, take a long time. Anyway, so I've got this example here. We've got a CAN ID of 0CF004000. And this is the CAN ID, which if we go over to here and we grab this again, because I didn't copy paste into this other screen. There we go. So we put our CAN ID in here. We say, yes, it's an extended ID because it's that long. We've got a decimal representation of that. And we've got our DBC message ID. And if you have a DBC file that relates to the device that you're interfacing to, that this number here is what you will use to find that particular index. So I've just uh, fixed a couple of things because I broke it. Uh, that's my fault. <laughs> so we, we fixed it now. So we put in our data here. So we have the frame of FF, 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 and then the fourth byte is 68. So we go into here and we put in the slot number three because obviously it starts from zero here, um, 68. So we've done that, converts it to binary and then maps those uh, bit data values from uh, most significant to least significant. Or in this case, it's least significant, but we'll get to that. Um, okay, and after that's 13, put that in there in uh, slot number four or five, and the rest are just F, and they're already F here, so that's fine. So now we pick our bit start. This will change depending on the device, and you might have just all Fs, right? Just all Fs, but the bit start is still set specifically for this CAN ID. We know that this starts at bit number 24. So we put in here bit start, least significant bit of 24. Our bit length is 16, which is two bytes. It's already two bytes long, but if it were three, we would increase that to 24, but we don't need to now, so that's fine. Endianness, now this is kind of, this is a little technical. Endianness, little or big, signifies whether you are scaling from least significant bit or most significant bit. And your technical documentation will tell you this. It'll either say LSB, least significant bit, uh, little endianness, or uh, MSB, most significant bit, or big endianness. So those are the sort of the four options that you're probably going to see. If it doesn't say anything, just pick little. That's usually the default. The scale here, this has already been set as the default value, but really it could be anything. It could even be more than what's actually in there. So it could be 1.125. And over here, you can see what that does is it's generating the physical value by going scale times data in decimal plus offset. And we haven't set an offset. And for this example, there is no offset, but sometimes there is. And on top of that, sometimes it changes <laughs> depending on the signal it's receiving. So that's a little annoying. But again, that's what the DBC file is for. Don't try and make one yourself. Like, honestly, you're better off just using the one that the manufacturer has uh, either provided you or that someone else has just, you know, created. There's a load of these online. But for this example, the scale is 0 0.125. And we see over here, it's generated a value. We know the offset is zero, by the way. And most significant bit, that's set automatically. We don't change that. So this is our resulted value. We have 0 0.125, that's our scale, times our data in decimal plus the offset, which is zero, so it doesn't change. So we now know that 621 is our resulted value. We look at this ID in our DBC file. Um, I'll pull it down. Yeah, here we go. So this is our DBC file. You can see it's SG underscore, oh, that, that means signal, by the way, signal underscore engine speed. So this is our engine speed. It's our RPM. And we know that a dump truck has really low RPM. So we can assume that this is correct. And this is 621 RPM. So that's how we get an actual physical value from a raw piece of CAN data. That's pretty much it. I'll link uh, all of the tools I've used here, including the documents by CSS Electronics, CAN Utils, uh, Python CAN, 
and this Google Sheets document, as well as some other bits and pieces that you might find useful when you're trying to uh, run down this stupid rabbit hole that I found myself running down uh, a couple months ago. And I'm still working on it, but I think we're getting very close. <laughs> so um, I hope this was of some use. All right. Cheers. Bye-bye.